When I went to my first Iyengar yoga class, mm -hmm. and I went home that night, I had this complete certainty in myself. With 20 years of experience, Fabiola de Salvo is an esteemed yoga teacher who has profoundly impacted the lives of many through her dedication in the Ayunga yoga tradition and holistic wellness. Can you explain what Ayunga yoga is and how it differs from other forms of yoga? You know that the relationship between body, mind, matter is really, really strong. It is, it is the only way to get this kind of um, dialogue, first of all, yes. and then equilibrium yes. between these two. The only way to try to start that dialogue mm -hmm. is to be focused. Right. It's to be just observing and using all your possibilities, a very particular and special characteristic of, of the Iyengar method. That Before our podcast today, I would like to share something with you. It is incredible that many of you that tune in and subscribe our podcast will reach nearly 700 subscribers, a milestone that fills me with gratitude and excitement. When we started this journey, I never imagined we'd grow this quickly. So thank you for being a part of community and for your unwavering support. I promise that as we move into the summer of 2024, we will continue to elevate our content and bring even more inspiring interviews and content to you. So thank you for taking the time. And this is Jazzy. Well, Fabiola, thank you so much for taking the time. We're very excited to conduct this podcast today. Mm, you look amazing. <laughs> thank Appreciate you, so you much. bringing here. Yes. Thank mm. you, Jassy, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Absolutely. I would like to ask, begin with. Could you explain what Ayinga yoga is and how it differs from other forms of yoga? Well, this is a very difficult question because Ayinga yoga is uh, many things. You know? I, I'm going to do my best because uh, we are just talking about uh, a whole um, how a man, yeah. a particular man, has lived, designed the art, the discipline, and the knowledge of yoga. Right. So we have to, to try to explain what Iyengar yoga is. Yes. We need to, to find out how was his life. Right, absolutely. And what uh, he did. Yeah. So to, to more or less try to understand. Right. And then try to applied what mm -hmm. he he taught to mm -hmm. to, uh, to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. so but if i had to just to choose some general yes. concepts yes, to please. try to define what Iyengar yoga is um uh, it is obviously um a yoga uh, that comes from the Patanjali yoga. Right. No? And Indeed. Guruji used to say that. Right. He used to say, I am teaching the yoga of Patanjali. Right. It is you referring to us, mm -hmm. his students, yes. who are just labeling my yoga as I, I anchor yoga. Okay. So he was really, okay. Um, okay. you know, very direct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just saying that. Right. So it was us. But why? Because we could see, you know, when, let's just put in an example. Right. Uh, let's just, three people mm -hmm. are just uh, looking at some event. Yes. If you ask to each person mm -hmm. what had happened, yes. I, I, I mean, for sure, every person is going to give you his own, right. you know, tale yes. about it. Yes. No? So I think more or less it's like that in simple words. Right. So yeah. the yoga is one, but the way Guruji yes. study, experience, feel, understand, 
in his own body um, how how he could really absorb that knowledge is what makes that difference. So the yoga is one, but for sure the way he, the levels of uh, understanding he could just have about this uh, knowledge was really particular. And uh, also we have to think about the context, yeah. the historical moment, Right. The the country. Yes. Because he was born in India. Yes. And at that time when he was started developing and studying with his uh, guru, uh, Krishna Macharya, right. in that time also yoga was, for example, for only for men right. and only a very um, subject that it was like a, um, only for. Guru, gurus and shishas only for certain people, right. so certain masters and certain yes. disciples. So, like many or less, yes, something yes, that is yes. not for everyone. Okay. But then everything changed, and uh, he realized that uh, yoga could be many things for many people. Right, right. So he started to to try to unpack. It. Yeah. In some yeah. way, that yeah. knowledge that was in a certain point restricted and not allowed it to everyone to to try to open to to everybody. Right. So he first um, reflecting of also to the many students he that were just uh, doing yoga with him. Right. He also saw that many people could not uh, approach certain asanas of postures like the classical way. Yes. So he also took this observation and transformed his teaching yes. having this observation. So, right. so Iyengar Yoga, first of all, is for everyone. Right. Even he taught the Queen of Belgium at 80s. Oh, wow. When she was 80s. She started wow. at 80s. So, wow. yes. Uh, everybody yeah, could yeah, just yeah. Uh, who starts yeah. a practice of okay. yoga so and he just uh, confirmed that <laughs> teaching <laughs> the queen of Pedro. yeah and second and he elaborates so because he really could he started in uh, when he was 14 years old more or less right. practicing yeah. yeah and he died at 95 practicing yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. more or less we are talking about more than 80 years, right. a whole life dedicated to that knowledge. Yes. So for sure, for sure, he could just absorb all that and he systematized more or less this knowledge in a way that we could understand very mm -hmm. well how this uh, body, mind, breathing, matter I right. re I re yeah. are related. Yeah. to each other yeah. uh, so because of that um, his method his, his method is really you know sequencing and is progressive so you first start with the foundations then when you get the main idea the principal actions you move forward so at the same time doing this you practice in a safe way also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you establish the stamina, the flexibility, uh, all um, all that you need to go forward from simple asanas to complex asana. Right. But not only thinking in an asana like a physic only physical yeah. component. Yeah. Because, um, as you know, he used to ask to us, "Where is the mind? Right. Where is the mind?" When your body begins and ends, when your mind begins or ends, could yeah. you tell me what is the mind? The yeah. mind is everywhere. Yes. And indeed, he used to uh, say, um, if you see something that is not so happy, mm -hmm. you're going to begin to, to do this with your body. Yeah. So he has a strong relationship between your, what are you thinking yes. of, what is the content of your mind yes. and what the body is receiving and reflecting and also the same way if you try just to 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 liberate for example the pain of the body yes. the mind is caught on that if your body feels pain 
the mind is there, is caught yes, it in that yes, pain. Yes. So you only doing these few examples, you know that the relationship between body, mind, matter is really, really strong. Yes. So uh, he, he, this this uh, kind of uh, um, pursuing of details precision because I anger yoga many people no many step many technique many precision but through all my years just studying this method and trying to figure out how he he used to think yes. about it yes. it is it is the only way to get this kind of um, dialogue first right. of all yes. and then um, equilibrium yes. between these two. Right. Paul, no? The, yes. the mind and body. Yes, and uh, the only way to try to start that dialogue mm -hmm. is to be focused. Right. Is to be just observing and using all your possibilities, your organs and sense of perception, your organs of mm -hmm. actions, just being involved mm -hmm. in trying to figure out how to make the mind and body dialogue. Right. So that's why he was so... Um, he insisted so yeah. much yeah. and l look how you are placing your foot yes. um, uh, look how you are doing with your muscle uh, how did you strain your legs how did you expand your chest so all these kind of many many precise actions yeah. uh, instructions that are, are really 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 uh, in details really really precise so uh, it's, it, I think it's, I'm, it's the only way to try to be only in that moment, only yeah. in that moment. So, yes, Iyengar Yoga is uh, for everybody. Yes. Iyengar Yoga is uh, a method that uh, insists in the technique, mm -hmm. a progressive technique yeah. from simple to more complex, yes. a secure practice. Right. a precision and alignment because this yes. is the only way to get this dialogue and yes. to try to at the end uh, get w what yoga promises right. that is uh, more or less the known mind state yeah. and a state when the mind is yeah. not anymore or is there but not in his acting mode yeah, yeah. No, the, so. the, hopefully the transcendence of maya and uh Yes. Karma. Yes. Perhaps. The Samadhi, no? What yes. Patanjali Yoga exactly. says exactly. in the Yoga exactly. Sutra. So yeah. if we're trying to get there, we have to go through all the, yes. the different yeah. no? yeah, states. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And uh, I, I, I like the way, I love the way he, he not only uh, understand that philosophy or what Patanjali just trying to just mm -hmm. to teach or gives mm -hmm. to us, and then the way he could um, really, through his body, could systematize all that mm -hmm. knowledge to make us to understand yes. and to lead us to that purpose. Right. So right. I yes. think uh, I think this is very important because maybe some others uh, styles or methods of yoga are not so um, precise, precise yeah. are more like um, flexible, if I can say. Yes, yes. And that doesn't mean that Iyengar Yoga is not flexible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's, yes, it's yes, not, yes. It's, yes. it's a really yeah. tiny. Yeah, I, 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 what you just said remind, reminds me back to uh, the weekend, the first weekend we have met, where you led the training session of the yoga teacher training. And I remember myself or some other of the trainees when we couldn't do some kind of practice or asan asanas that you give us like a different option for maybe uh, depends on their like level um, and the, how flexible they are. So yes, this yes. is another characteristic. It's very adaptable yeah. to every person's circumstances because mm -hmm. it is not only, as I said before, it's not only related to the body because if a person also comes to my classes or oh, we saw many many of these cases at the institute in Pune in India yeah. depression so it's not only the body it could be 
a health, yeah. a mental yeah. health yeah. issue. So he 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 could give a, a certain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, answer through asana to mm -hmm. try to help those people. So right. this is also a very particular uh, and special characteristic of, of the Iyengar method that um, the use of the props yes. are really, really on the stage, right, no? right. on the screen, because yeah, yeah, yeah. if uh, a certain person for many different kinds of reasons mm -hmm. cannot uh, perform, do, feel, and a classical asana, mm -hmm. you cannot neglect, neglect that person to feel the yoga. Right, right. And or, or to experiment the yoga, a state yeah. of yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to try to, to figure out how, how to, to make that person to get the effect and the benefits of that asana, right. but according to their capabilities and uh, what that person needs at that moment. Right. Okay, if I, if it's tired, if it has not so much energy, uh, because it's not only because you cannot do, and mm -hmm. this is a misunderstanding, you know. When I used to see some classes, uh, Mar, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, yeah. marketing about Iyengar yoga, but they yeah. are not Iyengar teachers. But this happened. Iyengar <laughs> uh, 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 yoga classes with props. Uh -huh. Okay, yoga classes with props. Okay, it is yeah. not because the person cannot do the asana. It's not only that. Right. Maybe, obviously, if it's a 60, 70, or 80 years old lady or a man, maybe we can use a chair and it's suitable mm -hmm. for them to make some asana. Right. But it's not only that, because at a certain point you can do it. But one day you come to me to my class you see, I have been, I have for a very difficult situation in my family, for example, somebody passed away, maybe your mother, your father, mm -hmm. and you are one of my advanced mm -hmm. students and mm -hmm. you can perform all the asanas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in that particular moment, you are with a profound sadness in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that moment, because of that state, you have to perform the asanas in a different way. Mm -hmm. And in that way, the props are the way to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so. Quick question. What, what What is the context here when you say props or? Yes. So. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> it, the, the, the yeah. <laughs> because we have many now. At first, we just just starting using some blocks okay. or some belts. Okay or some blankets, but now we have a really whole universe of yeah, props yeah, yeah, at the okay. Institute, many different. Even ones that uh, Guruji just uh, developed later mm -hmm. in his just late, uh, um, late years, but also some props that uh, he developed with some students, mm -hmm. you no, know, yeah. trying just to help people. Yes. So there are many, but if we have to choose mm -hmm. like a top five, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it five. could be. Five. It could be <laughs> the belt. Yes. Block. Uh -huh. Blanket. Bolster and a chair. Uh, for example. Nice. It could be. Nice. The most common props we yes. use in different Amazing. classes, but there are many, many more. Amazing. Well, now we have the top five of the props when uh, when it comes to Ayinga yoga or yoga in general. I'm very curious, uh, Fabiola, um, however, before I ask that question, I want to take the quick minute to acknowledge you that how you, every time when we meet, you always bring uh, so much energy. And when I ask you some kind of question, whether it's related, for example, an asana or not, you always bring a lot of uh, context and details. So it wasn't just like I asked you something and then boom, it's the answer, but there's so much elements and layers with that. So I want to acknowledge you that um, your attention to detail and, and your energy. So um, I'm also curious about when you said um, Guruji, you're referring to BKS Ayanga, correct? So from your understanding, what was or what is his biggest legacy? Besides yoga itself. 
Well, he was a very compassionate man. Right. And I think he he could just he brought yoga in a different level because of that quality mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. his soul. Mm -hmm. Because all was uh, all what he developed in life is because he always kept in mind how can I serve those people. Right. right. Because many, many people approach him, asking mm -hmm. him for help, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was this uh, compassion he has inside mm -hmm. that uh, he could just figure out and think, and, you know, make up with many ideas about yes. what can I do to help those people. Not only students, but also uh, everybody, you know. Right. Right. So he was a very compassionate, but he was also a man who, who was, I mean, I, I sometimes just look in his video, uh -huh. his performance was, he was 60, 70, 75. And at that age, you, you, you see that man and you only see like a, a, a fire of life mm -hmm. on in it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, there are many, you can just yes. put Becca Sayenga in YouTube, right, right. you're going to find many, many videos and, and, and demonstrations, <laughs> and you're going to see that man with this all gray hair, mm -hmm. long black hair, mm -hmm. in 60, 70 years, performing those asana with so, yes, I kind of find Ta another. Tapas. Yes, tapas. Yes, this is the word in Sanskrit. Huh? Tapas. Yeah. Tapas is this uh -huh. this, um, this fire, this uh, effort, for but at for less uh -huh. at the same time. You know, right, right, because right. It's, it's like almost like a, a channel, like a focus. Yes, because he could do everything mm -hmm. that they're really really complex asana, but at the same time, just you see him just like. Doing like I don't know, taking yeah. a chai at home, yeah. taking a home, taking a chai. So yes, yes. if you look at his face mm -hmm. and the way he he performs those asanas, very complex asanas, and jumpings go back, forward, back, right, forward, right, going straight, right, for right, right. many things at the same time, but right. all with 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 this face so calm, breathing so calm. So it's amazing. Right. So. I would like to get to my 80s <laughs> feeling that, no? So obviously yes. I have him like a, a model. Yes. No? Yes, yes. First as a practitioner, right. because yeah. I, I want to keep that fire in myself mm -hmm. also. And then as a the, compa the compassionate uh, human being who was, and also as a teacher, he was really demanding. Mm -hmm. But the, the reason of that is because he knew by first hand, what yoga is capable to, to do for you. Right. So how can you, so if you know that, yeah. if you know yoga can bring you to those many, many marvelous things, you want everybody to get right. there. Yes. So this is why he was so demanding yes. with his student because he, I, 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 I really believe he wanted us to, to feel what he was feeling, what he was practicing. So mm -hmm. I, I am really, yes. always really amazed about this man. Yes. Well, Fabiola, I, I have to say that you definitely have <laughs> that discipline, that um, holding yourself and your student on a very high standard. So um, without a doubt, I believe by the time when you're 80, you would, um, you could look up to Guruji in your, in your own, in your own way. I'm, I'm, I have no I'm doubt going that. to, I, I'm on it. So yes, it's, yes. it's about now it's about life. Is I yes. get there or not, but yes. I'm for sure. I'm going to pursue that. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and if I, if if I transmit in my mm -hmm. classes just a little bit of what or what I 
I have been able to feel when I there at the institute with my mm-hmm. teachers. Mm-hmm. I am so pleased with that right. because it's, it's amazing the understanding right. about this object, how how they teach us to us that, uh, right. and this is all the way he used to do it. Right. We have this this little bit uh, inspiration of him. Mm-hmm. So good. It's perfect timing that you mentioned the word inspiration because I think myself and a lot of audience out there are curious. Fabiola, what inspired you to be a specifically Iyengar yoga teacher? Uh, you know what? I, I was already a yoga teacher mm-hmm. when I discovered Iyengar yoga. Right. Uh, I was a Shivananda yoga teacher. It's another beautiful school. Absolutely. Another beautiful method. But when I when I went to my first Iyengar yoga class mm-hmm. and I went home that night, I had this complete certainty in myself that if I have to keep going on this path of yoga, I should. Mm-hmm. I should take. Right. You knew that meant it was like if any chance of doubt, any mm-hmm. chance, no, right, in myself right. there was no chance for doubt. Right. So I was completely sure because what I have felt, what I have seen, and and yes, what I have felt mm-hmm. during that mm-hmm. first class. First of all, I, I was like kind of, oh my God, I think I, I do not know anything. Mm-hmm. No, no? <laughs> what kind of, oh my God, I do not know anything about yes. yoga, no? It was this first feeling. Right. And the second was, I want to, to know more. Right. And the way I want to know more is this way. Yes. Totally. This way. Because uh, I was, uh, I, I get all myself involved. Mm-hmm. in that class mm-hmm. and I really wanted to keep going just to feel that all myself every pore or my skin every muscle and every thought and every breathing all my self work was mm-hmm. there right. so I was just repeat I was I just wanted to repeat that every time I practice so right. definitely for me it was like uh it was not like I was just I was just searching for and I find it. No, it was like a hit. Right. You right. know? Yeah. I I went yeah. to that uh, that class. I knew it just in one class and something hit me. Right. I said, this is what I want to do. Yes. Wow. So I don't know if it was an inspiration because, okay, obviously that time I, I remember also mm-hmm. the name Christina Newton, the, the name of that teacher. Mm-hmm. It was many years, many years ago. Right. But I, I, I still I can remember everything of that class. Wow. Where was uh, how many we were? Uh, um, what were? Uh, we, we were yeah. at that time. Right. Uh, what was the sequence? What we yeah. did? Everything. Right. Right. I have all all in my in my yeah. memory. Was there? Uh, air condition in the no, room. because it was winter, uh, and at uh, that time I was in Salamanca, it was a very, it was, very it's, cold, it's time. Pretty, yeah, very cold, <laughs> very cold. Yeah. So it was winter, wow. but really, really amazing. Yeah, so yes, I, I think uh, obviously Christina did a great job, and I really started to just be in love with the method, sure, right? And then I, I couldn't stop. Yes. They start in just buying all the books, yes. start practicing at home. Yes. Because Christina, she, she used to live in Leon. Mm-hmm. So he just, uh, he used to go to Salamanca just once a week. Right. So I can, I, I, I had to wait just right. yeah. <laughs> that day to, yes. to, to go yeah. to classes. So the rest of the week, I just started in just, I bought the light uh, on yoga book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I started looking at the sequences that are at the, at the back of the book. And I started figuring out how, <laughs> how can I do all this? Yes. It's like an equivalent <laughs> nowadays YouTube, to, YouTube tutorial. 
<laughs> yes, yes. And it's pretty difficult because um, you you open that book mm -hmm. and it, it, I really, really recommend this book to everybody that is in the yoga path because it was the first book uh, who explains in details the techniques mm -hmm. of more than 200 asanas. So oh, wow. if you would like to learn about the techniques, this this book is a must. So I opened that book and this, you know, first, bend your right leg, second, and take the, the knee with your right hand, third, turn, yeah. so all these kind of precise yeah, yeah. details and yes. actions to do. Yes. So it was really amazing. But then <laughs> I saw myself and see Guruji's in the picture say, oh my God, right. I have a lot to work to do. <laughs> Yes. And the be at the beginning, we are all more or less like that, no? Yeah. And But I usually, just because uh, I, we all, not only we as a practitioners and a student, and when we become teachers, the students usually ask this question. Oh, we are going never just to be capable but to do that. Yes, it could be. Right. It could be. But this is not the reason to stop practicing, first of all. And second... The, the that picture of Guruji in that book is like uh, you know the like a very wonderful teacher Jawahar Banghera from Mumbai mm -hmm. says that picture is like the model picture mm -hmm. because Guruji um, devoted his life to the practice mm -hmm. so obviously he spent eight hours a day practicing. Mm -hmm. That's why he could just do all perfectly right. in so marvelous way, more yes. than 200 asana. Yes. Many simple or so complex. And obviously you have this kind of model mm -hmm. or the, 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 the final of, of the path. For right. me, that picture is, okay, this is the final step. Right. This is, yes. But to get there, I have to find my own way. Right. You see my body. My conditions, my context. I have family. I don't have family. I have another world. I am a mother. I have many things. So using all that details and all those concepts in mind, you have to find a way to get there. Mm -hmm. You have to consider many things, you no, know, right. through that more or less journey. Yes. But uh, you have more or less. Uh, at least you have there the goal. You have their precise. Uh, how to how to look at it and if you look in details those pictures only looking at them you, you have a lot of information about how to to try to practice it because it's the picture itself is really is plenty of clues for yeah. you to to try to to learn but yes more or less so this book is, is really is really wonderful. So yes, I started in that way and practicing at home. Wow. And I think it's very interesting that you mentioned difficulties and I hope that we get to more in depth about that during the next episode. However, I'm very curious about Fabiola, on your path of spirituality and yoga, what was the biggest challenge that you came across? My my own limitations, but I am talking about uh, the image of myself. You know, mm -hmm. because we in nowadays we have this uh, kind of um, of understanding about yoga about only just placing the body in. A, in some way, no? Right. And uh, obviously, if I have this body, mm -hmm. it is not that body. That maybe that is more flexible or can achieve many things, no? So this challenge, for me, the most challenging thing is my, it was myself. So try to figure out all these this preconcepts, the ideas about myself, uh, why should I do, 
No, what kind of practitioner should I become? No, all this that little by little you are you are transforming, and in some cases erasing, in some cases rewriting, right. in some cases just putting aside. No, so more or less that because all the comparisons all all the time just uh, maybe i cannot do that maybe i cannot achieve this maybe no and this is your process right it's my mental process it's yes. my you know yes and this is the real challenge not if i can do any asana or no get whatever for me it was all this kind of ideas go and self doubt Many things and and also doubts, um, fears, and approaching complex asana. Oh my God! What happen if I I fall? What happen if no? Many many things, and you are just confronting yourself. So this is the real challenge. So why why are you, why why do you you don't know what to do that? Why mm-hmm. why if if you have to practice this? There is something that inside you says, no, go there. Why? Why, if you know that this kind of practice is going to help you, you are, you are avoiding that kind of practice? Right. Why? So it's, it's all uh, at the end is um, more like trying to know and better yourself. Right. And the first friend you have, and the first enemy you have is yourself right. at the same time. Yes. And it's really, really, really shocking. Shocking because, uh, no, because I can say, no, I, for example, uh, because I have been all my process of studying in Inger, Iyengar Yoga has been really, in Spanish, we say, acontecido, with many things happening around because. I have no other teacher. I moved from a country with any teacher, so I have to figure out how yes. to keep learning. But yes. but this is outside. Right. Imagine if I at certain point stop my practice because here in Venezuela there are no teacher. I cannot mm. learn. Mm. No, th- this is the situation, but the limitation is in my mind. Mm-hmm. Only understanding that you can move forward. Right. What you just said reminds me a lot, not only in the spiritual path or the uh, someone who aims to have a better lifestyle, but also I see a lot of similarities in, for example, in the business world, in being an entrepreneur or being an artist, because there's so much voice in our minds. Maybe some of the voices are from our environment from our parents or even from our, our friends, I think really by being on the path of working on oneself or spirituality or yoga, and we could overcome these challenges, whether big or small, and we can set goals. And when we overcome these challenges and when we achieve these goals little by little, and we gain more confidence and we have more faith and trust in ourselves and hopefully in the universe, and I really see so much similarity when it comes to um, practicing yoga or starting a business or being an artist or just being a good person, being a, like a person with the integrity and a focused person. So we talk decent amount about Iyengar yoga. However, it's only one thing seeing <laughs> Fabiola from the uh, podcast or hearing. If someone is in Catalonia or in Barcelona wants to take a class with you, where do you teach and what are the times? I know maybe the hours are different each week. Yes, um, just, they can just uh, reach by email, for example, mm-hmm. because I teach in a, in a yoga center mm-hmm. in Hospitalet right. right now. Nice. So if they want just to know about my timetable and said they can just no uh, ask to me and you can just put whatever. And also my Instagram, right. Ariola de Salvo, okay. you can share with okay. them and they can nice. just watch me to direct message. 
make sure everybody <laughs> give Fabiola a follow. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> and uh, also feel free to drop a comment down here in the YouTube. What was your biggest takeaway from this conversation? And if you have practiced Ayinga Yoga before, feel free to write in a comment or send Fabiola a DM message. What has Ayinga Yoga impact your life or what are some of your biggest takeaways or biggest challenges that you have overcome? Because I And think... if you have any question in your comments, Please. just let me know and, right. and please just to, right. to answer them. Is the beginner class is still on Thursday afternoon? Yes, at six, uh, uh, quarter past six. Okay. It's just one quarter hour. Quarter past six to quarter past seven. Yes, it's one hour. Okay, because I think if it's more than one hour, I will... Uh, I. I mean, I would be fine, but but I would just sweating a lot more. I think. <laughs> no, when I work for yeah. beginners, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, is it's there a okay. fan in the? Is there a fan? Uh, yes, the yes. There are now in summer. There are air conditioners. Oh, so no problem. Nice, incredible. <laughs> we we might need that because a lot of yoga studios in Barcelona are super hot. Yes. <laughs> thing. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. Anyway, well, thank you so much for your time and. Well, everybody stay tuned, follow Fabiola on all social media, and this is Mr. Jazzy, and I'll see you at the next episode. Much love.